Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Louis Vuitton Palm Springs Mini Backpack. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workout, let's go to work, let's do your laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. Uh, before we jump right into the questions, um, I had a lot of you guys uh, asking me my thoughts on the all-in tote from Louis Vuitton from this past weekend. I shared a, a few pictures of it, a couple videos of it, on my Insta stories. So I thought that I would address that really quickly and then we'll just jump into the questions that you guys were asking. Uh, all right, so the all-in tote, um, I was able to go to the boutique when I was with Jerusha and we were trying them out. Uh, and I actually have a picture of it on me with the MM and I'll insert those pictures right now. So I, the one that you're gonna see with me, it might be a little bit grainy only because I was trying to screenshot it from my Insta story. It might not end up working out, I don't know. Uh, but for reference, I am five foot five and um, then I'll insert the picture of the other sizes that it's available in. All right, so it's available in two different sizes, the MM, which retails for $16.20 here in the States, and the GM, which retails for $17.70 here in the States. It is technically a luggage piece, so it's in the in the travel section. Uh, you won't be able to find it in the handbag section. And, um, you know, there's a few things that I do like about it. I like the fact that it comes with a zippered closure, so you have a little bit more privacy. It's a very large tote. You can, I mean, it's perfect for traveling if you end up carrying quite a bit with you. I also like the fact that it has the straps that are not very thin so that way if you have a crazy amount of items inside it won't end up digging into your shoulder so it's a little bit more comfortable uh, and it's just a very very large toe um, so I you know I, I get that that they wanted it to be very comfortable to travel with that way you can just kind of um, you can fold it down that's why there's not a whole lot of structure to it um, but as great as that is, it's personally not for me, uh, only because of the price point that it has. I remember when I tried it on, I was, just like, I was just like, oh yeah, this is pretty nice, I really like it. And then she told me the price point, and I'm like, you're lying. She's all, no, I promise. And I said, but it's mostly all canvas, you know, and I couldn't wrap my head around it. I'm like, that's crazy, a Neverfull is less expensive. Uh, you know, so I get the whole idea, I get the whole premise, but um, unfortunately it's not for me just because of the price point that it does end up having for mostly a canvas handbag, uh, you know, and someone said it perfectly on Instagram, you can end up going for a different fashion house uh, that is a lot less expensive and known for being a travel bag such as the... Um, Longchamp Le Pliage line, uh, and you don't have that, that price point that comes along with it. So unfortunately, it's not for me, uh, but if it ends up working out for you and your lifestyle, that's fantastic. I love the fact that it comes with a little luggage tag, but for something that is mostly canvas and just has a smidge of, of leather, the price is just um, not something that I would end up adding to my collection. So again, I just wanted to give you guys my thoughts on the on the Louis Vuitton All In before we get into Minx Monday. So uh, hopefully that was able to answer your guys' questions. And um, like I said, to each their own, it's great. I feel that the MM size is just a tad too large because the MM reminded me of a Neverfull GM. And then the GM is huge. Uh, I really wish there was a smaller size um, that was a little bit more user-friendly in my opinion. But again, I just wanted to share my thoughts on the bag. Next question from Patricia Fridas. Hopefully I said that correctly. Minnie, you once said that you had a coach bag that your dad gave you a while ago. Do you still have it and will you share it with us? Coach was my first beginner brand and I still have a few in my collection. Would love to see one if you're willing to share. Uh, wonderful question. And yes, I still have uh, the coach bag that my dad got me. I actually have three pieces left for my collection. The one that I'm about to share with you guys. I also have a pink leather coach bag that Robert got me and he also got me, Robert, uh, um, bought me like a travel pouch. It was this bright white travel pouch. I never wanted to use it. It still has the tags on <laughs> because I'm thinking there is no way I'm going to ruin this. So I still have those three pieces. Uh, but the one that my dad gave me, I will never, ever, ever part with. Uh, it comes in the original brown dust bag that says coach. Remember these old school dust bags? I think they've changed them like three or four times now. Uh, but I believe this is called the Demi Baguette, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, it's been forever, but it is this beauty. 
I, like I said, I think it is the Demi Baguette. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, but I used it to death. It has uh, the signature, uh, you know, coach uh, fabric here. And then this is all pink suede at the bottom. It has a pink suede handle. And I just, I didn't care. It had, it has color transfer throughout. Uh, but for as old as it is, and for as much as I used it, even with the color transfer that it has, I still think that it's held up insanely well, don't you think? Uh, and then, of course, the coach tag has the pink on the side. And then on the inside, let's see how <laughs> how bad it is. I don't even check it out. Let's see if it's, uh, if it's damaged. No, I mean, I think I did pretty all right. I mean, it's a tiny, tiny little bag, but it has some kind of some kind of wear in there but um no i just i loved it and i like that it was the pink with the silver hardware i've told you guys my love for pink is <laughs> goes way way back uh but yes it is the coach demi baguette or the baguette um what's it called a uh, little bag and it has the little coach leather wear established 1941. So, yep, never, ever, ever will I part with that, but I love it. And Coach will forever have a soft spot in my heart as well. Next question from Alejandra Flores. Hopefully I said that correctly. I noticed you used the Louis Vuitton mini pochette with the Alma BB strap on your Disneyland trip. How did the mini pochette work out for your trip? I've always wondered if it's possible to use it as a small handbag. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know what other straps you can use for this small leather good. Uh, fabulous question. And yes, uh, for my Disneyland trip, um, I ended up using the Louis Vuitton mini pochette and the Damien Ben, and I attached the Alma BB and Damien Ben strap to it, and it ended up working out perfectly. Uh, of course, I ended up having to really, really downsize only because uh, I wanted to carry just the essentials with me. And if I'm going to an amusement park, I don't need to carry my entire handbag. So I was able to get away with carrying four different items inside. Uh, I had my gum because that's important. <laughs> I had uh, headache medicine because I seem to always get headaches whenever I'm going to an amusement park. I had a lipstick in there. Actually, I think I had two. I had a lipstick and a lip balm. And uh, I also had the key clay. Now in the key clay, I had uh, my driver's license. I had a credit card. I had some cash, not too much. Uh, bobby pins, hair ties, and I think we had insurance information. So I had a lot more essentials in this little guy and this fits perfectly in here. Uh, so I've always been a big fan of using the mini pochette as a catch-all or as a wallet or sometimes as a cosmetic case. I've never really wanted to use it as a handbag only because I felt that it was just too small. You know, I felt that it would look really awkward on me. Uh, but I didn't want to use my wallet on chain. I didn't want to use another handbag that was either too big or had too much leather going on because I didn't want to have to worry about water stains or anything like that. So last minute, I just decided to throw the strap on there and it's probably one of the best decisions I ever did. <laughs> because like I said, it's small, but it fits just the essentials that I need. And I was able to put my sweater on top and still be super, super comfortable. And um, the strap ended up working out perfectly on me crossbody. I didn't, I thought it was gonna be a little too, a little too short, but uh, it ended up being right at my waist. I don't think I have a picture of me wearing it. If I do, I will insert that picture now. I still feel that the way that I ended up pairing it, I overwhelmed the bag, but at the same time, the fact that I was able to wear something uh, very comfortably and just have the essentials just ended up working out exactly the way that I wanted it to be. So it might not look the best. It might not be the most proportionate to my body frame, uh, but in this particular instance, it was just the right way to go. And I honestly think that you can really get away with any type of strap uh, from Louis Vuitton to use this. Personally, I prefer to use the narrow strap straps just because um Again, I feel I don't want to overwhelm the bag by using a larger, thicker strap, kind of like the monogram uh, bandolier strap that I bought. Uh, but I know some people have used it with uh, the bandolier, uh, what's it called, the, the straps from their speedies. I'm talking about the thick one that I, that I bought a few months ago. Uh, but you can also interchange with different fashion houses and just give it a completely different look. So, you know, believe it or not, I'm kind of all for it for using it as a little handbag when need be, uh, you know, when I need to go. So, um, when I need to be super, super, super compact and I don't want to use a bigger handbag. Uh, so 
it works. <laughs> like I said, it might be a total stretch, but I am all about versatility. And if I can use that as a handbag and interchange the strap, then that ends up working out for me. You know what I mean? <laughs> so hopefully that was able to answer your question. Uh, all right. Next one from S. Johnson. I am starting my luxury bag collection and I have a case of the gimmies, but I don't want to be in debt. I'm trying to save, but I feel like it's going to take months, even years at this rate. How long does it take you to save for a luxury bag when your money tree runs out? How do you keep yourself from using credit cards when you don't have the funds? I worry about items I prefer buying. I worry about items I prefer buying new, having a price increase, or the items being discontinued. These are awesome questions, and I know exactly what you're talking about when you refer to the gimmies. Uh, all right, so for the first one, how long does it take for me to save for a luxury bag when my money tree runs out? Uh, it could take, it depends on the item, to be honest. Uh, it could take a couple of months. It could take up to a year, year and a half if it's a larger purchase. Um, if I'm going brand new, if I'm going pre-loved, uh, but sometimes that time frame can be cut um, a little bit shorter if I have items or an item from my current collection that I'm not using then I'll end up selling those and putting that towards the item that I have my eye on so it can all it's it can all change it, you know it can all be um, kind of all over the place to be honest uh, but mostly it could be uh, half a year to a year if it's a larger purchase for me to be able to uh, continue to save up for that item uh, all right and how do I keep myself from using credit cards when I don't have the funds um this is just something that I've done uh, when you know ever since I was a lot younger. I just I'm not a big fan of debt, and everyone is different. And you know this isn't a knock against anyone that does something um, that I don't end up doing. But for me, if I don't have the funds for it, I just don't end up going for it. And I really feel that over the years I've kind of just started to say you know maybe it's it is what it is or uh, it was meant not to be in my collection if I didn't have the funds for it and I know that might be really corny some people might be completely thinking that's ridiculous but going into it with that mentality ends up helping me helping me a little bit more and it makes me feel a lot better about the purchase or not getting the item uh, and I'm able to move on and um, sometimes I feel that it's just, you know, it, I didn't end up getting it because maybe I wouldn't end up liking it and then I ended up losing money. And I've told you guys before, I've lost a ton of money throughout the years uh, just by buying and not really um, thinking about the purchase. But, you know, I just, I'm not a big fan of debt. I never have been. And if I don't have the funds, I just don't end up going for it. And in the past, a lot of sales associates would sit there and say, oh, you know, uh, there's going to be a price increase next week. There's going to be a price increase next month. Uh, they're going to be discontinued. You're not going to be able to find this color, blah, 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 blah. And years would go by, months would go by, and there was no price increase. I was still able to find the colors and all these things. And it's such... It's, it's like 50-50 because sometimes it will end up happening just like they had a recent price increase with Chanel on the 15th. And I know some items have also silently gone up like, uh, you know, Karen and I were talking about. Hi, Karen. Uh, and I feel that, you know, some items, ha you know, do go up and sometimes that price increase does end up happening. And other times it's just like they're pushing the sale. So it's so difficult to you know, to, you know, if you end up going for it and then it's like, oh, well, where's the price increase? It's almost like you're waiting for it to happen. You want it to happen because you got it beforehand. At least sometimes I felt that way, you know? Uh, but that's why I'm thinking if, if it does increase in price and trust me, I think I can speak for everyone. Hopefully, uh, no one wants to pay more for an item that was $500 less expensive three weeks ago. Right. Uh, but at the same time, if I don't have the funds, I just won't go into debt just to add it to my collection. It has to be primarily something that's going to work out for me. Um, but it, I mean, it just, it is what it is. I think another gray area, I feel like it's full of gray areas, right? Uh, is if you have, let's say that you have your eyes on a $3,000 handbag and let's say that you have 2,500 of the 3,000 and let's say that in two weeks you have a payment coming through or you sold something or whatever it is and you'll end up having the money for the item that's about to go on, on to price increase. Again, we can never know because I feel like sometimes they hit us like a ton of bricks and other times it takes years for it to happen. In that particular instance, because you have that money on the horizon coming in, then 
charging it and let's say then you know you only have the 2500 and then you wait for it then you you're able to pay it off that ends up working out as well but it's the times when you don't know um, or I should say for myself when I don't know where the funds are going to come from or how long it's going to take to acquire the um, acquire the funds for it then that's just when I completely just throw my hands up I surrender and I just say I can't do it I can't do it unless I physically see that money in my hands or I know where it's coming from and it has to be within a short amount of time then I'll end up doing it but like I said everyone is different everything works out differently for different people but it's something that I've stuck to all these years and it's really helped me you know I honestly feel that it's really helped me to be a little bit more, um, what's the word? Um, and trust me, it's taken me a long time to pinpoint, but I feel that over the years, it's really helped me to keep my eyes on the prize. And now I feel that the items that I do end up adding to my collection are going to be either in my collection for a very long time, forever items or items that I'll end up using a lot more into my lifestyle. So hopefully that was able to answer your question um, because like I said, I know exactly what you're talking about with uh, with the gimmies. Uh, all right, next question from Lisa Robinson. I'd like to know what you think of the Louis Vuitton bento bag. I am on the wait list for it and the small one made my heart sing, but I won't buy a bag that won't fit my phone, so I'm waiting for the large. Uh, fantastic question and I will insert pictures of the bento bag because it's available in three different sizes. I will insert those pictures right now. All right, so the Bento Box East West, uh, my beautiful friend Linda, Leo Lion LV, she just unboxed it on her channel. I believe that one is around the $2,600 uh, price point. And then you also have the Bento Box uh, itself. It's a smaller one. I believe that one's $2,300 ish. Uh, and you also have the Bento Box BB or the Bento BB. And I believe that one's all leather. And that one's like $2,800 ish, $2,900 ish. Uh, they were recently released. They're from the Cruise 2000. 18 collection and um, let me tell you this bag I didn't know how I felt about it at first you know when I first saw pictures on the lookbook I was thinking I don't know it's kind of busy it's kind of this it's kind of that but upon seeing the bag I don't know what it is the bento box the east west I think it is absolutely fabulous it's edgy and it's kind of mysterious and it's very Linda uh, I'm sure Linda will agree won't you <laughs> it is perfect for her collection um, but it has the monogram reverse monogram you also have the black leather and it's also it also comes with a removable um, strap so it also makes it very versatile but I don't know what it is about this this bag and it's not very it doesn't have all these crazy bells and whistles but I just think that it works I don't know what it is and I think it's the edginess and usually uh, you guys know that I tend to stick to classics that's mostly what I end up going for but this one just has such a unique silhouette to it that I'm just kind of like, I don't know, it's it's intriguing. And it's one of those bags that you won't end up seeing, you know, on every corner type of thing. Uh, so I think it's awesome. If it's something that you love, then definitely go for it. Um, I think all three sizes are, are very, very cute. I agree with you, though. I like the East West a lot better than the other two um, just because of the size that it has. And it's still not a very large, overwhelming bag, in my opinion. Um, uh, but like I said, the fact that it's different, it's edgy, it's mysterious, and the lock on it is insanely gorgeous. <laughs> so I think it's it's definitely a conversation starter. That's what I like to refer to it when it's a unique type of bag. You know, like I said, you don't see them on every corner. Uh, so it's a, it's a conversation starter. So if it makes your heart sing, if you like the smaller one or the larger one or whichever one you go for, I think that these are absolutely fantastic and uh, please let us know which one you end up going for uh, so hopefully that was able to answer your question all right next question from monica t i recently purchased my first chanel bag medium classic flap in black lambskin with silver hardware congratulations that is a fabulous fabulous combination uh, due to its current retail price i've decided to go through pre-love market as i wasn't sure i wanted to spend so much money on a new piece when it finally arrived at my house i had mixed feelings about it there was an excitement, but I also felt like I was cheating myself. I actually waited several hours before I even opened the package. And when I did, there were no butterflies. 
I don't want to sound like a snob who only feels excitement when purchasing a brand new bag, but have you ever experienced similar feelings when purchasing pre-loved goods? Uh, this is a fantastic, fantastic question. And once again, congratulations on your beautiful um, uh, medium classic flap. I, like I said, I love that combination. Uh, okay, so I completely understand your feelings. And uh, again, I'm only going to speak for myself, but when it comes to a brand new item, Sometimes I feel that there's a type of adrenaline. Um, you know, I feel like I'm on cloud nine when I end up walking out of the boutique and then you have that beautiful packaging, you have this great experience, and it just adds to the overall experience of purchasing the bag, right? And then you have that, that fresh smell of leather, whatever it is. I know some people might think I'm totally delusional, <laughs> but I mean, I, that's how I feel. I feel like I'm on cloud nine and I'm just like, ah, type of thing. And my heart is singing and I feel like everyone can hear my heart singing. However, when it comes to the fact of the price point, and if I'm saving anywhere from a couple of hundred to a couple of thousand dollars, that makes me even more excited for the item. And that's what I really love about the pre-loved market because you're able to save funds on a bag that you really, really like. It has a story, you know, it has, it might have some beauty marks here. It might be in excellent condition, whatever it is, but you're saving a crazy amount of items and you can decide to put those funds that you're saving on either a brand new small leather good, maybe another handbag. Some people end up getting two handbags for the price of one. You end up getting three, three items for the price of one. You know, you can end up getting the pre-loved handbag. You get a brand new SLG, or maybe you get a pair of sunnies or whatever it is. And I love that. I absolutely love that because buying brand new, like I said, you do get that adrenaline. You do get that, um, that type of sensation that, okay, it's, I mean, it's in perfect condition. If there's a scratch, I'm the one that scratched it. I'm the one that did this, right? But saving the money is fantastic. And it doesn't have to go towards another luxury good. It can go towards a trip. It can go towards anything you absolutely want. And at any point in time that we can save money on luxury goods and give them a new chapter, then I am absolutely all for it. I think that is fantastic. So, like I said, I completely understand where you're coming from, but by all means, you're definitely not cheating yourself because you're able to save that much money on the, on the item that you like and plus I feel that when it comes to getting items pre-loved, at, um, at least for me, I feel like I don't have to baby them as much, you know what I mean, versus getting it brand new. And there have been times in the past when I would get a brand new item, I didn't want anything to happen to the vaquetta, I didn't want anything to happen to the leather, what have you, and it would sit on my shelf forever and a day versus getting it pre-loved. I'm just, you know, it might have a little beauty mark here and there, it might have a little bit of scratch there, or whatever, but it still kind of lets me relax a little bit and it lets me enjoy the bag quicker and a little bit more. So I don't know if that makes sense or not, but I say go, I mean, heck no. I mean, just embrace it. You, you know, you didn't cheat yourself. You save money and maybe you'll end up getting a brand new small leather good, or maybe you'll end up getting a handbag with the savings. Who knows? But I think that is absolutely fabulous and wonderful. Nope. Absolutely nothing wrong uh, with going the pre-love route. And it's just as exciting to save money. At least I feel that way, <laughs> you know, so I am all for saving the money and hopefully that was able to answer your question. And if you do decide to keep it, then by all means rock your handbag and just don't even think about it um all right but fantastic question uh next one from hi i'm shannon what handbag is next on your wish list um it is actually the chanel reissue i haven't really i thought i i thought i decided on what size i wanted now i'm kind of all up in the air um and it was between um keeping the chanel the pink chanel deauville that i unboxed last week which i am now keeping or going the pre-love route for the chanel reissue but i still can't decide what size i want and i keep going back and forth with uh with the hardware sometimes i'm like no 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 i'm gonna get gold and then I see the, um, the ruthenium and I really like the overall look of it. So I'm like, maybe I'll go for the ruthenium. So until I can figure out exactly what I want, I'm going to have to put it on hold for now, but it is the, uh, the Chanel reissue. I think, I honestly think, I honestly think, and I say that very loosely, the Chanel reissue might just be my last Chanel handbag that I add to my collection. <laughs> 
That's why I said I, I, I say it very loosely. Unless the perfect red comes along, then I won't end up, <laughs> then I'll end up getting a new one. I mean, another bag. Uh, oh my God, what, I've told, what have I told you guys? I'm just a crazy bag lady. Next question from Laura G. Have you ever gotten your Holy Grail bag then after getting it, wanting yet another Holy Grail bag, or are you satisfied? Uh, this is a wonderful question, and at one point in time, I had two Holy Grail bags that kind of, they were a tie. Uh, really, one was a little bit higher up than the other because I kept thinking there is no way I will ever be able to get it. The price point just made me, I felt like I was hyperventilating type of thing. Uh, and those are the Chanel Jumbo and the Louis Vuitton Speedy 30 and Multi color Blanc. So um, I was able to, to get both of these beauties. Unfortunately, one of them did end up leaving my collection because I just didn't, I couldn't bring myself to use it. It was too beautiful and that was the Louis Vuitton one. Um, and I am 100% satisfied with my Holy Grail bag. There is no other Holy Grail bag for me. Uh, there are a few other bags out there that I really like, but the Jumbo was just you know, and the fact that I was able to get it, it just, it, I don't know, it, it's kind of a, it's kind of a weird feeling, to be honest. I wish I could put it into words, so I'm, I'm having the hardest time trying to articulate those feelings, uh, but I just, I think it was just one of those things that I was able to, with hard work and patience, I was able to acquire that just really has such a special place in my heart, you know, and the Louis Vuitton one, yes, I loved it for so long. Like I said, it sparked my interest. Uh, but the Jumbo was a little bit different, you know, and there was a huge price difference between the two. Uh, but no, you know, that's, I am 100% satisfied. There's no other Holy Grail bag for me. The Jumbo is it. And even if I don't use the Jumbo as much as I use my medium large, uh, still, I am, I'm happy with it. I don't think it will ever leave my collection. But uh, if I end up adding other bags to my collection, they're not going to be Holy Grail bags just because of, you know, how long it took all the hard work, all the, <laughs> everything that went into putting funds towards that jumbo. I mean, no, there's, there's nothing else. <laughs> so I am good to go. No other Holy Grail bags, uh, but fantastic question. All right. And the last question from Hunter B. I've been looking at Apple watch bands and I came across some on Etsy. They are made from older Louis Vuitton bags. What are your thoughts on reusing the canvas from bags like this? Uh, love this question. Uh, all right. So I know that uh, there's a lot of companies on Etsy that end up uh, reusing the canvas and they end up making uh, bag charms. Other people make like pouches. And then you have, like you said, the the, uh, the bands for the Apple watches. And I think that is a fantastic idea because kind of like what I touched base on uh, previously in the, or not previously, earlier on in the video, you're giving that handbag another chapter. You're giving it more to the story. And even though it's not technically, um, you know, the, the, the watch band isn't made by Louis Vuitton, it really is, though, if you think about it, because it's an authentic Louis Vuitton bag and they're using it to make those. And if the bag no longer serves a purpose for, you know, for using it as a handbag, if you can end up turning it into this and turning it into that and you're a huge Louis Vuitton addict, then I say, why not? You know, it's all about repurposing the canvas and making it even more versatile. So I love it. Like I said, it adds more story. It adds more to now the watch band. You can say it came from a Speedy. It came from a 1970s luggage piece. It came from this. It came from that or what have you. And it adds more story to the item that you have. Even if Louis Vuitton technically didn't design the band, it's still coming from Louis Vuitton. <laughs> At least I feel that way. Uh, but no, I am absolutely all for it. So hopefully that was able to answer your question. All right, you guys, so that does it for Minx Monday Q&A. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I was able to help. You had some amazing questions. Uh, now, for this week's lineup, uh, first and foremost, I am thankful that everything has resumed back to the way that it should be. I'm not going to be running around like a maniac anymore, so I can uh, respond to your comments because I really do miss chatting with you guys in the comments below. Um, but for this week's lineup, I have, um, I'm going to try to do my Chanel collection. I'll do the same thing that I did with my Louis Vuitton one a few weeks back. Um, so it might be crazy long, just so you guys know. Uh, I have some love from you, and I might have one other video this week. It all depends, uh, but I will try to get uh, a couple more out there, only because you guys didn't get to see me too much last week. Um, but if... Um, 
for whatever reason that it doesn't end up working out, I want to wish you guys a very happy Thanksgiving. I hope you're able to spend it with your family and friends and just enjoy the holiday uh, because I know from now until Christmas, it gets crazy, crazy because <laughs> you have Black Friday, you have all these things going on. Um, and I do not go Black Friday shopping anymore. I used to. I used to stand in line and now I'm like, I'll do everything online. It makes it so much easier. <laughs> uh, but if you guys enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. And I will see you guys later this week. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.